Hello everybody. In this video, I will take you through a gradual, yet spectacular phenomenon in nature. It is called gradation. In the previous video on exogenetic processes, we discussed weathering and its types. In this episode, besides other things, I will be trying to answer how, when and where this gradation happens. Gradation, a peculiar term for us, isn't it? It is simply the leveling of the land by means of some natural agents. Exogenetic Processes Part 2 As mentioned earlier, under exogenetic processes, we will limit ourselves to gradation. What is degradation and aggradation? Well, degradation is the eroding of land surface and aggradation is the building up of land surface. As to the question, what makes this gradation happen? Here it is. So, gradation happens due to some natural agents such as running water, underground water, waves, glacier and wind. As to the question how gradation happens, it happens in three stages, namely erosion, transportation and deposition. As to where it happens, it happens both on land and sea. Here we will see about gradation on land. The place where a river originates is called the upper course. Here erosion is high. And where it reaches the sea or ocean, it is called the lower course. Here deposition is high. So, in between these two ends, we can notice several features such as the waterfall, oxbow lake, meander, floodplains, delta, etc. all landforms of gradation. One feature of gradation is the gorge, a valley with very steep sides. And if a gorge extends for hundreds and thousands of kilometers, then it is referred to as canyon. One such is the Grand Canyon in the United States. Another feature is the V-shaped valley. A gorge has very steep walls, whereas the V-shaped valley has a little gentle slope. When a river flows over, where hard rocks lie over soft rocks, the hard rocks withstand while soft ones erode, resulting in a feature where water falls vertically from above. Yes, you guessed that right, waterfall. Another remarkable feature of gradation is the pothole. You know, early humans, before the invention of pottery, used these holes to heat water. How? You could guess. As a river flows, depending upon the terrain, it loops and bends, which we call meandering. During times of flooding, sometimes the river gushes forth to take a shortcut route. And as a result, a meander gets cut off, resulting in an oxbow lake. Oxbow? From where do they get such a name? So, we saw how rivers erode the land surface. Now we will see the depositional landform of rivers. First is the alluvial fan. 
a fan shaped deposition made at the foothills of mountains. A river on reaching the sea deposits alluvium at the mouth of the river. In areas of low tide, erosion by sea is usually negligible. So, a fan-shaped landform becomes visible, which we call delta. At the river mouth, sea water enters into the river because of high tide. Salt water gets mixed with fresh water to form brackish water. Such of a landform is called an estuary. One difference between a delta and an estuary is if deposits like this are found at the river mouth, it is a delta. If it is absent, then it is an estuary. Rivers usually deposit debris along its sides. As a result, the height of the river banks increases. Such deposits are called levees. Flood plains. Plains adjacent to a river gets flooded during times of floods. Such plains are called flood plains. Next, we go into the erosional landforms of underground water. But before that, we need to know about caste topography. Caste is derived from the Slavic language, which means limestone. Secondly, we need to recollect from a previous video how underground water influences landforms. Erosional landforms of underground water. Terra Rosa. This type of red soil formation is the result of oxidation. Lapis. This type of karst topography is due to carbonation. When limestone rocks dissolve in water, landforms such as sinkholes and caves are formed. Depositional landforms of underground water. Calcium carbonate is a mineral found in limestone. When it gets dissolved in water, peculiar features are formed on the ceiling, floor and walls of caves. When calcite deposits are formed on the ceiling of caves, they are called as stalactite. Deposits found on the floor, stalagmite. When stalactites and stalagmites meet, they form a pillar or column. 